So if you remember, students, yesterday, I, was, I told you that I would be speaking this week on the importance of choice. And I'm using the letters of the word choice to explain a few different characteristics and ways in which we must choose. And if you remember, yesterday, I told you about that most important choice of all, the, the choice that begins the journey. And that's choosing Christ, Jesus Christ. That's also the easiest choice to make. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the next step in that journey of making healthy choices. And as you know, the next letter in the word choice is the letter H. H for humility. See, humility is something that the world doesn't value very much. Yet without it, you will find that God's blessing is not on your life. You could work hard and you could be successful even from the world's standpoint, but without humility, that will be meaningless. Let me tell you a little secret. There was one man who lived the most successful, happy life ever in the history of the world, and that was Jesus Christ. And if you want to have that same happy, successful life, dear friend, make Jesus your model. Let him be your teacher. That would be like saying, if you wanted to learn how to be a good batsman, go to Sachin Tendulkar. He's the one that did it best. Now, you may argue about that. Some would say Dravid because he's a Bangalore boy, but that's not my point today. But that's also going back to the principle of humility. It's also why the Bible is so important, because it contains the teachings of Jesus. And the very first teaching that Jesus gave us in the New Testament is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, where Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, which is another way of saying, Blessed are the humble, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, friends, we're in this world for a very, very short time. Even if you live till you're 90 or 100 years old, in the span of eternity, that's very, very short. And there's a kingdom to come, the kingdom of eternity, which will last forever. That's what's called the kingdom of heaven here. And what Jesus is saying is that he wants to give us all of the kingdom of heaven. So think of it like a treasure that's hidden in many, many, many different boxes. There's a bunch of treasure boxes. And they're all locked up. And what Jesus is telling us is that he'll give you a key, like a master key, that can open all of these treasure boxes, every single one. And that key is humility. If you're humble, the entire kingdom of heaven, the world to come, it's all yours, dear friends. That's how powerful humility is. So what does it mean to have humility? See, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, that humility is in the mind. So it's not what you do so much, or even as much what you say, but it's how you think. And it doesn't mean having low self-esteem or thinking that you're good for nothing, but it means recognizing that Whatever you have is given to you by God. You did nothing to deserve it. Even your intelligence, if you do well in school or in sports, or your looks, if you think you're handsome or beautiful, they're all given by God. And when you're humble, you recognize that. And so you can never look down on somebody else or think that you're better than them or treat them badly because they don't have something that you have. Jesus also told us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, that we can learn humility from him. So not only did he teach us what humility is, he also showed us. Remember yesterday, I was telling you that Jesus loved us so much that he came down from heaven and lived on this earth as a human being. And eventually he died 
one of the most humiliating deaths you could ever die. And that's the death of a criminal. You know, we see a lot of dogs on the streets in India. It's one of my favorite memories when I come back to visit. You can hear the dogs barking, even at night, the stray dogs on the streets. Imagine if you saw a starving dog, very sick and full of sores and um, uh, just sickly looking. You'd feel sorry for that dog. And if you could do something to help that dog, I'm sure you would want to do that. Maybe take it to a doctor or give it some food. But it would be quite another thing if you became like a dog and lived like a dog and suffered like a dog. That's true humility. And my dear friends, that's what Jesus did for us. He was God and he humbled himself and became like us. And the distance between God and man is much, much, much greater than the distance between man and dog. That's what Jesus did. And so he exemplified, he gave us an example of humility, even in just coming to this earth. The Bible also teaches us in 1 Peter 5, verse 5, that whenever God sees us being humble, he gives us something called grace. Now, you've probably heard this word grace before. If not, and even if you have, I don't know if you really understood what grace means. You can think of grace like the money of heaven. You know, if you have money here on this earth, if you have a lot of it, you can pretty much do anything you want to do because you have the money to do it. And just like that, if you have grace, you can do anything you want in God's kingdom. And that means even here on this earth, living in God's kingdom while we're here on this earth, and then for all eternity, God's kingdom is yours if you have grace. Grace is the money of heaven. You can think of it like that. But as that verse says, he can only give it to you if you're humble. So humility is this secret to having power and authority in God's kingdom. It's a wonderful thing. And I'll give you an example that I hope will help you remember this so that we know how we can practically live in humility. You see, the world is passing away and everything within it, within it is passing away. And so everything that the world values is worth nothing. It's worth zero. Wealth, riches, that's a zero. And if you have more of it, it's just a bigger zero. What about being handsome and beautiful, or at least you think you are? That's still a zero. And if you think you're the most handsome boy in the class or the most beautiful girl in the class, that's still just a bigger zero. What about fame, popularity? Everybody knows who you are, famous in the world. See, these are the things that the world is seeking after. That's also a zero. And the more famous you think you are, or the more popular you think you are, it's just a bigger zero. Coming first in the class. Now, teachers don't hate me for this, but even coming first in the class, if you think it's such a big thing, is a zero. Now, you must work hard. Do the best you can. But not everybody can come first. And even if you do, if you think something of it, that's just a zero. Now, there are many things like this. I could go on and on, but they're just zeros, different form of zeros. And it's not a matter of how many zeros you have, because if you have one zero, that's zero. If you have 100 zeros, that's still zero. Or even how big those zeros are. If you write a big zero, it's still a big fat zero. And Galatians, there's a verse in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3 says, if you think that you are something, and you don't realize that all of these things are actually zero, then you're fooling yourself. Remember, all of these things are ultimately worth zero. Well, then what's the point? You see, Jesus is the only one who has value. And here's the beautiful thing. If you humbly realize that all of these things are worth nothing, they're all worth nothing, and you give Jesus the first place in your life, then he will give all of these other things real 
eternal value. So the question is not how many zeros you have or how big they are, because God really is the one who determines how many zeros you have or how big they are. What matters is, is Jesus first in your life? And do you recognize that all of these other things are zeros and you don't look down on others? Then everything that God gives you, your whole life all of a sudden becomes meaningful. It has value. So put Jesus first and everything else in its proper place. That's humility. Now, practically, humility means thinking of the needs of others instead of only thinking of yourself. You know, the world is full of people who grab, take advantage of others to succeed in life. But when you're humble, you think of others. And one way in which Jesus was an example of this was that he made friends with those that nobody else wanted to make friends with. There were people in his day who had a very infectious disease called leprosy. There were sinners that nobody else wanted to hang out with. and People judged. There were poor fishermen that everybody else thought they were good for nothing. They were Jesus' friends. So today, one way in which you can be humble, dear students, dear friends, is find somebody that nobody else wants to be a friend to. Find somebody else that is left out and is lonely. Make friends with them and you will find that you're demonstrating the humility of Jesus. I want to close by emphasizing something I said yesterday. See, all of these choices you can make beginning today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow or next week or next year or till you're 15 or 20 or 30. You can make the choice today. You can make the choice today to choose Christ. You can make the choice today to choose to be humble. You won't regret it in the life that is to come, which is for eternity. God bless you. Let's pray together. I thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy in loving us and showing us an example of humility. I pray that all of us will follow your example. Bless these dear students and the staff. In Jesus' name, amen.